review of systems. Now you can still put negative. And here's what I'll tell you, you're allowed to put negative. Negative is very acceptable. I have actually talked to doctors that have had the latest, greatest EMR system. And if you ever have seen a note from the latest, greatest EMR system, and it's five pages long, including one and a half pages of review of systems, that's even more of a crap note than the one I showed you before, okay? There's nothing worried, because you, you, you go to the back, okay, what'd they say? That's all I really want to know, because I can't figure out what's going on, because they got this many pages of negative review of systems. I have talked to people that have gotten audited, and they said, look at all this, you just copied and pasted that from the note before. Uh, you don't get credit for it. And you can say, oh, no, 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 but I did it. And they say, I don't care. I think you copied and pasted it. You don't get credit for it. So it is much worse to put too much, especially if you have a computer or, or Microsoft Word or something, than too little. Because putting too much won't give you credit either. So here's what I will tell you. In review of systems, in physical exam, in even past medical social history, all these areas, the book says several times that you can put negative or normal. And if you put, you know, review of systems, GI, negative, that's fine. You will get credit as if you reviewed the GI system. Now, you can't put it in there if you didn't review it. You know, that's fraud because you're not, you're not coding what you did. But if you put in there negative or normal, you will actually get credit for it. And you're more likely to get credit than if you have this big negative thing that's five paragraphs long. And then when somebody else reads your notes, it's not going to make them mad. You're like, you know, sometimes I get mad. So, when you do review of systems, you have to actually put in review of systems. Let's go on. Past history. We have medical history, family history, and social history. Medical history is everything that's wrong with them medically. Their immunizations, their medications, their allergies, their operations, uh, all that stuff. We know what a past medical history is. And really, to get credit for past medical history, you just need one of these. Now, for good history, you probably need all of them. But to get credit, if you put no allergies, you're covered. For a family history, basically, what all diseases does that family have and what have they died of? That's family history. Social history is everything about the patient that has nothing to do with medicines. So it's where are they living, who are they living with, how much school, what are they eating, drinking, smoking, who are they having sex with, all those things are social history. We know what medical family social history is. When it comes to Getting a medical family social history, we kind of have two areas here. We can have a pertinent history, which means it needs at least one area from one area. So no known drug allergies is fine. Or we can have a complete history, which means for an established patient, we need two areas, non-smoker, no known drug allergies. Or for a new patient, means all three. So that's very simple. Uh, because, especially for a new patient, if you have them fill out that new patient paperwork, past family medical social history, you're covered. And what we will see is just like review of systems, for an established patient, if none of this came up in the history, like they're already on this medicine or they're allergic to this medicine or they're smoking this much a day, if it didn't come up in the history, what I will tell you is 99% of the time, you didn't need it anyways for your documentation. So let's look at, uh, oh, and there's one other thing. Uh, can you update past family medical social history? Can you update your review of systems? Yes, you can. The key is two things. Number one, you have to indicate if there are any new changes, what they are, or you have to indicate there's no new changes. Okay, if you just say C history sheet, that doesn't count. You can put C history sheet, no changes, or C history sheet and note medication changes or something. So you have to indicate if there's changes or not and where to find it. Then you can just update whatever you've already got and you get credit for the whole thing. So history, there's four types of history, problem focused, expanded problem focused, detailed and comprehensive. We have this graph, which you don't even need to worry about. Let's look at what we've got. And the requirements are here. And like we're going to talk about over the next few minutes, it's not, you're not going to have to memorize it for a couple reasons. Let's see who's next. Um, okay, we're going to skip that. All right, let's look at Cheryl O1. My left arm really hurts. My left arm really hurts. So, looking at HPI elements, how many elements do we have? Location and severity, that's it, we have two. So we have one to three elements of HPI. Do we have any past family social medical history? Any review of systems? No and no. 
So we've got a very, very minimal history there. Let's look at Ben 02, or oh, lie to you. We have one more Ben 02 with the rock. Uh, just lately, my nose has been running a whole lot, and it just feels like I've got like a rock lodged up in my sinuses, and it's terrible. I've been wheezing, and I can't breathe very good, and it's just a bad deal. Okay, we've already talked about that. He has four more HPI elements, and we still don't have any past family social medical history. So let's listen to see what Cheryl has to say. My elbow started hurting a few days ago, and I took some Motrin, and, and I did that for about a day, and that, that worked for about a day. But the more active I got with it, the more it hurt, and Motrin didn't really help. Um, cocaine seemed to help the best. All right. Okay, that's, that's Cheryl. Um, Cheryl is my wife, and Cheryl was not wanting to videotape on a Sunday afternoon. So, uh, but what do we have there? We have one element of social history. Okay, that's the reason we put that, that example in there in the first place, is because now we have one element of social history, which gets us up to that higher level of history. Question number one, a V code, prevention and acute problem. Uh, probably talking about the question of what about a well visit and a SIG visit in the same visit. Uh, we will talk about that more later today. So I'll save it up here. And if we don't talk about it later today, I'll tell you about it after we're done. So, but we will talk about this. If a patient is in the office for vaccination only, what if the office is, what is the office visit level? Um, Offices that has no nurse, which, okay. Here's the thing. If a provider, um, nurse practitioner, PA, or, or physician, does not see the patient, then you don't get a bill for an office visit, with the exception of a 99211, which is a nursing evaluation and management visit. Uh, we're not talking a lot about that at this time. It's sort of outside of our scope. That covers things like allergy injections or blood pressures or, or giving a prescription, something like that. It does not cover vaccinations. Uh, if a, even, if it doesn't, even if it's an RN that gave the vaccine or if it's a high school kid that gave the vaccine, you get a bill for the vaccine administration code 90471. You get a bill for the vaccine if you paid for it, but you don't get a bill in offices at like a level one if you give an immunization because you're not doing any other evaluating and managing other than what was required to do the immunization in the first place. So you don't get to do that. Um, patient tells you there, let's see, she is feeling like, ah, she's feeling like dying and nearly goes to the ER. Um, now, it's one thing if she says she's feeling like dying, it's something if you think she is suicidal or if she just feels so bad that she thinks she's dying. Uh, we'll get into that as we talk about this. What makes it a severe versus moderate? And some of that is going to be how we interpret it. Some of that's going to be our own clinical judgment. So we will, like I said, we're, we're going to talk about the severe patient at length over the next two hours. Okay, a patient has COPD, see diabetes, smokes from car. Okay, what level of service if the patient has, um, okay, we're going to save that. I, I, we'll get a lot of questions that say what level of service is this? We're gonna wait because I think you will all know the answer within two hours. If not, you will within four. 992, okay, I usually coded 992, and 13 at the most. 80 to 90% of my codes were level three. Can I, uh, let's see, can I, let's see, expect audited by Medicare insurance if I, still, okay. If you suddenly start coding differently, can I expect to get audited? Um, maybe, maybe not, uh, everybody's different. Uh, here's what we know. Since that University of Michigan study came out, people have started coding a lot more level fours and fives appropriately. Uh, all I can tell you is you need to look says you need to code. Not too high, not too low. And then hopefully by the end of the day, you're going to know exactly what you need for documentation to match with that code that you just did. Now, is that going to protect you from an audit? Is it going to cause an audit? Nobody knows anything uh, as far as why some people get audited, why some don't. All you can do is make sure that if you are audited, you are doing the correct things, okay? And actually, there is a way to get audit 
um, insurance, and we'll talk about that later. It's also outside the scope of this talk, but it's kind of a neat deal. We'll talk about that. We have a patient with end-stage renal disease, on dialysis, diabetes, hypertension. That's okay. Takes, but it's okay. What level of service? Um, uh, to make it worse, they don't speak English well. Okay. Um, I said we're going to talk about that later, but uh, at it, well, you had me at end-stage renal disease. That's a five. Okay, how far progressed is their renal disease? Uh, the end. That's, okay, that's a five. That's a five. Even if they speak English. Ah, we will get to that. We will get to that. That's, a, the, and the, that's what we're going to, in the advanced coding after lunch, we're going to get to that. But uh, actually, end stage renal disease is chronic problem with severe progression of disease. Uh, even if they're stable, even if they haven't changed at all from last time. They have severe disease progression. They have kidney failure. Okay? That is, because that patient is different than the patient whose kidneys are fine, who's also stable. Okay? That is severe disease progression. Um, just a second on the questions. Let's finish these first. What are some examples of systemic symptoms? Um, systemic symptoms is basically your constitutional symptoms. Fever, chills, sometimes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, sometimes blood where it shouldn't be, sometimes inappropriate weight gain or weight loss. It just it basically, you know, what's the difference between a bladder infection and a kidney infection? Uh, man, they're sick. You know, they're febrile, they're pain, they're, you know, and they, it hurts when they pee. And so systemic, we kind of know it's not runny nose, it's not cough, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's the systemic constitutional symptoms, but it's not specified in the book. What counts as a treatment plan? Okay, treatment plan is very specific. That's why we have those slides in there. It is patient instructions, nursing instructions, therapies, medications, or referrals. Those are treatment plans. It is, it's not, uh, it's like, what about here, Flu fluids or suction? Sure. If, if you're doing suction, that is a treatment plan, like in the inpatient setting. If you're doing fluids, you say, encourage fluids, you say, drink this much, those are all treatment plans, okay? For family history, is it okay to put negative or non-contributory? If you did the family history and you feel it is negative or not contributory, it is fine to put negative or non-contributory, okay? Here's my family history uh, with pediatrics. Do you have anybody in your family that died suddenly for no good reason or any childhood diseases? No? Okay. You know, now I have a big paper that I have to fill out and say your mom had hypertension and dad's uncle had... I don't care about that. It doesn't really affect what I do, um, but we put it in the chart. So, but yes, you can put negative or non-contributory. Brings up a question, talking about suction or fluids. Uh, I heard several people this, the, during the break. Now, are we going to talk about inpatient? Uh, here's the same question. Are we going to talk about outpatient? Are we going to talk about inpatient? Are we going to talk about um, nursing home visits or consultations or all this? It's all the same. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you. Everything we're going to learn over the next four hours is going to make you an expert at identifying this is a low, moderate, or high-risk patient. Okay, and that's going to correspond to a level 3, 4, 5 outpatient or consultation. That's going to correspond to a level 1, 2, 3 inpatient. That's going to correspond to a level 2, 3, 4 nursing home patient. Okay, because they all use the same words, a moderate level of decision-making. You know, high risk. It's all the same. And so you'll see down here on the bottom, you know, this is for established patients. Down below what we have, this is for new outpatients. This is for consultations. This is for inpatient admit day ones. They all use the same requirements. And so you guys are going to be an expert on all types of E&M coding, even if you thought you were just learning outpatient, because it's all related. It's all the same. A uh, patient with diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, you change medication dose for all three since not controlled, does that make it a level five? We're going to talk about this later. Uh, when does the patient cross the threshold from a four to a five if it's not necessarily on the paper? And that will be a talk, we will talk about that at length later. Okay, now other questions, I saw hands. Uh, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens when I'm not dead yet? If they're not dead yet? Okay, they're in the process. Um, that's a very good question, and we will talk about that as we get towards the rest of the day, but I'll, I'll tell you. Um, if they have severe disease progression, they are a sick patient. 
And the only way they go less than a level five is if you refuse to address it, okay? If somebody comes in with severe COPD and they're stuck in five liters of oxygen at home and they're on steroids every day and they're, you know, but I'm stable, you know, and, you know, stable on two packs a day, stable on five liters of oxygen. They haven't changed at all since last week. Those are level five patients and they continue to be level five, unless you actually just say, okay, I'm not even going to think about all your drugs and your oxygen, okay? And we don't do that though. I um, mean, hopefully you don't do that. You know, if you do that, they call you a pediatrician. That's right, because we don't have to know. Um, but we don't want to do that, okay? And so if you address it, that continues to be a level five problem. That is just, because that is totally different from the guy who hurt his elbow. That's a totally different patient. That's what makes them a five in the first place. So they've got all these problems. Okay, other questions and we're gonna go on. Okay, yes. Okay, the question is, what about you can't get credit for HPI and review of systems? That's, that was the trick question we talked about. History is history. Review of systems is, is reviewing a system. History is basically what you get out of the patient. You know, they say, oh, I've been coughing, congestion. Do you have any trouble breathing? No. Have any fever? No. That's still history. Okay, if I'm reviewing a system, I say, if you had any, uh, you know, tachypnea or brady, you know, if I go through the respiratory system, I've reviewed the system. And so that's saying, yes, you can't double dip. And so if, you're, if this says history, and if you're wanting to get credit for review of systems out of that, be careful because you probably won't if you get audited. If you want credit for review of systems, you better do a review of systems and mark it separately. Yes. So if Medicare says, or any pair, if some pair says, we're only gonna let you have two level fives and two level fours a year, anything other than that, you're gonna go on our radar. Why would they tell us that? That's right, because they're our friend, right? No, because what they're wanting you to say is, is this really a four or five or not? If it is, you code it. And if it is, you code it. And if you get audited, you're ready for an audit. Because, especially on those complicated patients, you may have one patient where you do a dozen level five visits in a year. Now, if you're not gonna code as level five when they're really level five, do you put it down to a four or a three or a two? How, how do you even know? What, you, you don't, it's a five. It's a five, and if they say, look, why are you doing this? They'll say, look, you tell me how to code it then. Because my understanding is this is a level five issue. Now they may say, oh, look, you just addressed last week their diabetes, hypertension, blah, 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 blah. And now they come in and they're coughing congested. You can't address that again. Well, that's crap, you know? Because what they're saying is, if, if, if they're saying they have all these chronic problems, but now they're just here for an acute problem, that means that you don't look at their pro your problem list, you don't look at their medications, you don't look at their allergies, you don't, if you don't look at it, then yeah, that's the three, okay? And you have to worry more about malpractice than money then, okay? Because then you're doing bad medicine, and that's all sorts of bad things right there. And so what we have to do is you have to code what you see. And it's gonna become more and more common where people say, oh, if you do this, we're gonna be watching you and we're gonna try and intimidate you and we're gonna try and, and then you just say, you tell me how to code it then. Because my understanding is this is a five. Are you telling me to code fraudulently as a three? Because I, I didn't think that you're supposed to tell me to code fraudulently. I love using that word fraud when it comes to that. Um, so, okay, we're gonna do one more question then we're gonna have to play, please write them down because of time. One more question. Um, at the back. Okay, what if you have a complicated chronic patient being managed by a subspecialist? Um, most of the time it'll still come into play. For example, let's say you have end-stage renal disease and he's got seven meds for that and he's on dialysis and he's being managed by the nephrologist and he comes in and he's sick and you think, okay, we're gonna put you on this medicine. Now, if you say, we're gonna put you on this medicine, there you go, then yeah, that may be a level three or four patient. But if you say, uh, we're gonna put you on this medicine, let me think, how does this interact if your creatinine clearance is this? How does it react if you're on dialysis? How does it react with these other medicines? And I've made the decision that I'm gonna do this medicine in this way based on all the things going on with my patient. But still, my plan for you is continue these medicines, keep your follow-up with dialysis, with your nephrologist, I'm gonna do this for this problem. If it figured into your problem solving, your medical decision making, then it counts. And if it did not figure into your medical decision making, again, you have now become a dangerous doctor because it better figure into your decision making, right? I mean, if, if not, then that's, you got way more problems than an audit then, 
okay, that, that you should not be taking care of. Okay, write down your questions because of time. We will get to them, I promise. Moving on, physical exam. We talked about medical decision making, we talked about history. Let's talk about physical exam. Physical exam, we always do plenty of physical exam, but sometimes you might examine the wrong things. When we talk about a physical exam, we talk about body areas and we talk about organ systems, and they're not the same thing. Body areas are head, neck, chest. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. On page 30, there's the reference to if you want to download the guidelines from the government, from Medicare. There's a web page at the very top of the page. There's what the page looks like. But we have body areas, head, neck, chest, abdomen, GI, GU, uh, back, and each extremity. Those are body areas. When it comes to writing our notes, I much prefer the use of organ systems because organ systems are a little bit safer. Organ systems are very similar to review systems. Constitutional eyes, ear, nose, throat, um, heart, lungs, GI, GU, muscle, skin, neuro, psych, and heme. Those are our systems. And whenever I talk about physical exam, I'm a believer in templates. Uh, now here's templates. Some people have great use for templates. Some people have an aversion of templates. Here's what I tell you is every one of you use a template. Why do you do history before a physical exam? Do we really have to do history before a physical exam? No. Why do we do it? Because we did it yesterday that way and the day before that way because we were taught that way back when. We have a template. Some of our templates are in our head. A SOAP note, S-O-A-P. Some of our templates are on paper. Sometimes they're in a computer. If we even do dictation, we have a template we're going by in our head. Everybody has a template. So when it comes to your template you use, whether it's in your head or on paper or in a computer, go with organ systems. Let me back up one. Um, go with organ systems because that'll cover you. That'll cover you. Now, we talked, remember we talked about the CPT guidelines, the 95 guidelines, the 97 guidelines. They're almost identical throughout all three of those, except for one area, and that's in physical exam. That is the one difference. And here's what I tell you. In 1997 guidelines, has these wonderful things called bullets. Now, most of you had some experience with bullets. And here's what I would tell you. I hate bullets. I don't like bullets. I used to preach and teach bullets. All you have to do is satisfy the bullets and you're covered. I don't like that anymore because sometimes I was having to do things in physical exam that were not necessary for that patient that I was seeing. So, if you want to go by the 97 guidelines, you can, but you don't have to. Because what it says on that big page right back there is that if you get audited by Medicare, they have to use the 95 or the 97, whichever is to your advantage. Okay, whichever is to your advantage is what they have to use. And I'll tell you, they're identical throughout except for the area of physical exam. In the area of physical exam, 95 guidelines are easier. Here's the 97 guidelines. If you have one bullet, and I think we have bullets at the back of this. I don't, we don't even know if we include the bullets anymore. We used to have it back in the appendix, but we, I don't really like bullets, so I, just, I think, yeah, we took them out. So, one bullet, six bullets, 12 bullets, or for a level five comprehensive exam, you need at least two bullets from each of nine areas. I'm not going to go into what all the bullets are because it doesn't really matter because the 95 guidelines are easier. Let's look at Lindy. She comes in for a sore throat. If I walk in and look at her throat and then step away from the patient, what have I done? I have done, hello, a problem-focused exam. I've done a limited exam of the affected body area. That is a level two exam. Okay, now if somebody comes in for a sore throat, have you ever done that little? No, no, we don't. Okay, but if you want to know what a level two exam is, that's a level two exam. It's almost the thumb exam. Okay, you know, that's, a, and I guarantee you, you can look at them from five feet away and get at least a level three exam without touching them. Okay, a level two exam, if you've touched the patient, you've done more than that. So let's say she comes in with a sore throat and I look in her mouth and then I feel of her lymph nodes, and then maybe I uh, take a look in her ears. You know, if, if, well, no, I didn't even do that, did I? I'll just look in her mouth and feel her lymph nodes. So, if I do that, what have I done? I have done an expanded problem focus exam, which is a, still a limited exam of the affected body area and other related stuff. Okay, I've just, that's a level three exam. I looked in her mouth and felt of her neck. That was a level three exam. And I know you've all done more than that. Why? Because we've got the steth we can't help ourselves, right? We've got the stethoscope. We've got to put in our ears. We've got to use, you know. That's me. I don't care if you're 40 years old. You come to my office, I am looking in your ears, right? That's what pediatricians do. 
You know, we've got the stethoscope, we pay good money for it, we've got to use the stethoscope. So, she comes into the sore throat, and we look in her mouth, and then we feel on her lymph nodes, and then we maybe look in her ears, and we listen to her heart and lungs. Pretty straightforward, it, it, you know, it's, it's by all means not a huge exam, but that'd be a typical exam on a healthy patient with an acute sort of minor problem Eyes, ears, nose, throat, neck, heart, lungs. A normal clothed exam. Well, what is that? That is a detailed exam. An extended exam of the affected body area and other related symptoms or, or areas. How many bullets was that? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't have to do bullets with the 95 guidelines. Did I do an extended exam of the affected body area and other related stuff? You've probably done that on every patient that's walked in your door since the beginning of time. Have you done that much? That's a level four exam. Does that mean that everybody walks through my door that I do that on this level four patient? No. My history, my exam, doesn't make them anything. It may make my note higher, but that's still bad. They make themselves a level three, four, five patient. Sometimes I do too much. That's just me. I can't help myself. So, and then we have a comprehensive. Think a level five exam. A level five exam is a general multi-system exam, which means eight organ systems in 1995 vernacular. This is where the difference is. Because in 97 guidelines with the bullets, I've got to get nine organ systems. And I'll tell you what, nine organ systems is hard to get with their clothes on. It's hard. And you know very good and well, some of you have a status asthmaticus, and they get three breathing treatments over the course of 45 minutes, they get better, go home. That's a level five problem. I don't need to take their clothes off. I should not have to look in their underwear if they're having that much shortness of breath, okay? But if you want a, level, if you want a high level exam in the 97 guidelines, you're either gonna have to look at their eye fields, you're gonna have to do a neuro exam, you're gonna have to do a psych exam with all the axes and stuff, or you're gonna have to take their clothes off. And none of those are necessary for somebody with severe shortness of breath. Uh, so, this is better. This is better. Here's what you need to take away from this. Eight organ systems is all you ever need to have, and that's for a level five exam. So, if we put all these together, we have our template design. Look at this note. Well, let's say, if you're auditing this note, we already had a little practice audit earlier. If I'm auditing this note, and this person said this was part of a level five note, and we're not even talking about the history or the decision making, if I audit this, as a, would this get credit for a comprehensive exam? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. This gets credit. And this is what's great because for some reason they think that we as doctors, if we put a normal or negative respiratory exam, we've done it. And you will never be accused of copying and pasting this. You know, if, you're, if your cardiovascular exam says, Regular right rhythm with no murmurs, S3, S4, gallops, or bruise. All pulses palpated and they were negative. Da, 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 da. That is a negative exam too. But if you've got that on every single note, look out, look out. And so this is great because even a lot of the government templates, they'll put out like for the well visits for Medicaid, stuff like that. They have a little circle, you can circle normal or not normal, put in why. And they're fine with that. All the times I lost issues in my audits didn't have anything to do with physical exam. Physical exam is easy. It's easy. So let's see. Oh, and then here's the 97. If you go back to the bullets, you can't put normal or negative. You got to put normal or negative on every specific bullet. So like with ENT, you have to put external ears, external nose, auditory canals, and 10 membranes normal. How tedious is that to go through nine systems and put all that? You know, so normal or negative is fine. 95 guidelines are better than 97. So again, either set are, are acceptable but it's way better to use the 95 guidelines. Now we're going to get into a big, long discussion about patients. Let's talk about Katie. We're gonna to go to Katie 01, and for the next several pages, what we're gonna do is we are going to evaluate Katie's notes. We're gonna start off easy till page 39. All these notes were written when the doctor saw Katie and you are the auditor. And so you're gonna audit the notes. So what we're gonna do, number one, is we're gonna decide what should be the level of service, number one. Number two, is this note that level of service? So let's look at the first one. I've got poison ivy again. Oh, I've got poison ivy again. 
So, at your table, decide what should be, we're going to say these are established, okay, 992, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What should be the level of service, number one, and what is the note as it's written? And we'll, we'll take two minutes for this first one, but we're going to get less and less time as we go on. Go. We're going to use our words. So, Katie's level of risk, let's start there. How many would say that she has a high level of risk? Moderate. Low. Okay, anybody disagree with any of that? Okay, so how, what should be her office visit code? Anybody? 213. So, what is her note as it's written? Why is it a 212? Okay, here's the thing. We did not put information here for minimal risk. Minimal risk is a level two patient, okay? And there's, it has requirements and stuff. Yeah, we don't even have two diagnoses and treatment plans, do we? We have one diagnosis, we have one treatment plan. This is a trick question. This is a 99212, no matter what kind of note we write, because this is one thing we did not talk about, that's why I threw it in here first, because let's listen exactly what Katie says. I've got poison ivy again. I've got poison ivy again. Katie came in and said, here's my diagnosis. And you said, yep. And you went, that's a level two. I don't care why or what you did. And there are some specific examples of that. Um, swimmer's ear. If a teenager says, oh, I've been swimming out in the lake and now my ear's hurly hurting and you look and say, yep, you've got swimmer's ear, that's a level two. Even if you use prescription medicine, Okay, when somebody says, I've got poison ivy again, if you put poison ivy as your di diagnosis, that's, a, that's an edit in the codes, and they will knock you down to a level two. Okay, uh, you, just one second. So, but you think, wait a minute now, when I see someone with poison ivy, I'm going to put on oral steroids, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, that should be level four, right? Yes and no. Here's the thing, if somebody gives you the diagnosis, that's a two. I've got poison ivy again and you concur. Okay? Basically, they're just consulting you. Okay? That is a two. Now, uh, let's take the example of an ear infection. Okay? If a teenager comes in, he's, she's been gone to camp, her ear's killing her, she says, I think I've got swimmer's ear again. You look, you say, yep. Okay? Now, is that different than when the mom comes in with a nine month old and says, they've got an ear infection? Why? Because they're drooling all the time and they're fussy and they've got diarrhea. Therefore, they've got an ear infection. And you say, well, let's see. And you do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, they've got an ear infection. You think, how do they know they had an ear infection? Yeah. Um, that's different than swimmers here, where they gave you the diagnosis. And just because she gives you the diagnosis doesn't mean it's accurate. Okay? So here's what we'll get to. This is an actual special case of poison ivy. Poison ivy is a two. Now, how we handle that later, uh, we're going to talk about in... The next slide. Let's go to KD03. I've got a rash everywhere. <laughs> so what if Katie comes in and she doesn't know if it's poison ivy? She's never had poison ivy or anything like that. She comes in with a rash everywhere. Okay, let's talk about this at your table. What should be the level of service and what was written down? Go. Page 35. How many of here think it should be a 99213? How many say 99214? Okay. Some of the people that said threes, why? Oh, we don't, remember, we're not grading the note. We're grading the patient. What in her level of risk makes her a three? Acute or chronic problem? Acute. So what are you saying it's a three? Because it's an uncomplicated acute illness. Okay. Those of you who are saying a four, why do you say it's a four? Anyone? Okay. We're saying because we have this much physical exam and this much treatment plan. Remember, we're not going to grade. This is the hard part because we're used to, so used to looking at our notes. What if I'd written a level five note on here? Does that make her a five? No. Remember, I don't get to make her a three, four, or five. She made herself a three, four, five. So we're not even talking about grading the note yet. What is her level of service? Now here, I'll agree with you. I think she's moderate. I think she's moderate. What words would make her moderate an acute problem? 
Okay, we can make it a case for this is a systemic rash. Um, but if we look here on skin, generalized contact dermatitis on arms, trunk, and legs, that's probably not systemic. Um, systemic would be like your good old petechial, purple kind of rat, bad, bad stuff. Okay, but here's what the book says. What's the difference between an acute, uncomplicated illness or a complicated illness? The book will give examples. Pain in a single joint or extremity is uncomplicated. Multiple joints or extremities is complicated. Uh, uh, acute onset new rash is uncomplicated. A generalized dermatologic eruption is complicated. Okay, that's, that's what the book says. So, a rash everywhere is complicated. Now, you, then you say, well, but it was only, we don't know that yet. We don't know it was only. Because somebody has a rash everywhere is different than they got this thing on their arm. That is different. You treat it different, you address it different, there's different side effects, different medications. So, she has an acute complicated illness. Or we can make case for systemic symptoms. And I understand why we called it a three, because I always used to call it a three also. So, we're going to say this is a 99214. Now we get to grade the note. And we did all these slides about history and physical. I've tried to sum them all up right here. Okay? The requirements for a 99214 are they have to be in this column, number one, moderate risk. Then they have to have at least three diagnoses or treatment plans or a moderate amount of data review, and that rarely happens. And this much physical exam or this much history of present illness. And like right here, I put physical exam of two organ systems. Remember what it said for detailed? It said, an extended exam of the affected organ system and other related, so that's two. That's two, and that's, the Medicare says the same thing, you have to have two. Or, how much history? Four elements of history present illness, two elements of review of systems, one element is past semi social history, but we have to have two out of three, decision making, history, and physical. We're making sure we got our decision making, right? That's what we're doing at the top. We're making sure our decision making, which leaves only one thing, history or physical. So here's what we're gonna see most of the day, our decision making and our physical carry us through. But let's look at this. Do we have at least three diagnoses or treatment plans? Oh, we're already stuck right there. That's why we cover that first because I can have a totally complete big huge history. I don't have enough medical decision making to call this a four. I don't have enough to call it a four. I better have my medical decision making in line. What could I have put on here to give us at least three diagnoses or treatment plans? Anyone? Um, okay, say that again. Avoid scratching the rash. That's another patient instruction. What else could I have told her to get another treatment plan? Discussed side effects of medicine and said, you better take it in the morning or it's going to give you insomnia and you better take it with food or it's going to make your tummy hurt. Oh, tummy, I mean, a pediatrician. Your stomach will hurt. Um, what else could we have told her? Follow up. More instructions. Call if this doesn't happen. If you take your medicine for five days and then it comes back after that, call, we're going to do this. All the stuff that we told her to do, we just didn't write it down. So if we'd written one more thing, just right there, follow up, we check that box, next routine visit. Okay? Now we have three patient instructions. And we have plenty of physical exam, more than we need. That would have, that would have got us there. That was all we needed. That's all we were lacking. Let's go on to KD04. I need to get my medicine refilled. Any problems, any side effects, anything like that going on? Okay. KDO4, patients here for follow-up of ADD. No problems or side effects. We did not do anything else in her history. Physical exam, we did about three. Diagnosis, number one, ADD. Treatment plan, number one, continue your current meds. Follow-up in three months. So, at your table, quick discussion, you got 10 seconds. Should this be a level three, four, or five? Using our words, we have what level of risk? Low, moderate, or high risk? Low. She has an acute or chronic problem? And how would you describe her chronic problem? Stable. Okay. One, stable, chronic problem. I think we all agree. Um, so for 99213, what do we need? At least two diagnoses or treatment plans. Do we have that? Okay. We have two treatment plans. Continue the medicine and follow-up. 
Those are both treatment plants. Yeah, it's tricky. It's at the bottom. I didn't put it right at the top. And do we have physical exam of these two organ systems? Yep. So that's it? So that's all we need for a level? So, okay, first off, how many of you guys would have coded this a level three yesterday? Good job. Good job. If you would have met it a four, you might have been in trouble. But I know a lot of people will do this as a two. So, patient comes in, absolutely fine and stable, on one med for one problem, and we make no changes, say come back in three months. That's a three. That's what a three is because we'll see all day long what a four is. So, that is a level three patient, and that is fine as a level three note. Question? Uh huh. Okay, if we were, have, let's say we have a, a form, a Vanderbilt form or some other type of form that we're reviewing, and we uh, put this in there with it, would that change our level of service to a higher level? No, because it doesn't change her level of risk. No matter what we do for her or to her, she still has one stable chronic problem. What about for time? Yeah, now I will tell you, if you spend 25 minutes face-to-face -face with her, now not taking care of her, actually in the room face-to-face -face, 25 minutes, that'll bump her up to level four, and we'll talk about that, why that is later. But that is rare to spend 25 minutes with an established problem patient who's absolutely fine, you're not making changes. That's a long time, okay? So yes, that would do it. Let's go to the next one. Page 37, KD05. Any problems, any side effects, anything like that going on? Ever since I've started on this new medicine, I can't hardly eat lunch at all. Okay. Patients here for follow-up of ADD since last visit has lost two pounds and had decreased appetite at lunch. So, what level of risk is she? Moderate, which would make her a level four patient. Now, she has a chronic problem with Okay, mild side effects. Let's see. We did a little physical exam, not much history, um, diagnoses, ADD. We stayed on the same medicine, didn't make a change. We said try to increase calories, follow up in a month. So we're saying this should be a level four, right? No, I didn't even change her medicine though. I have to change her medicine to make a level four, right? No, I don't. This is one I ran into with my nurse practitioner. Now, how is that a level four if I didn't change your medicine? Because we have a chronic problem with mild side effects. It doesn't say a chronic problem with mild side effects and medication change. It doesn't matter if you change your medicine or not. Oh, because that's a minor practitioner. Well, I thought if I don't make a change in medicine, there's no way that's a four. Sure there is. Remember, usually level four is not based on what I do. It's based on what they are. So, we're going to say this should be a level four. Let's look at our evaluation. Does she have at least three diagnoses or treatment plans? She has three treatment plans. Stay on the same med, increase calories, follow up in a month. Does she have a physical exam of at least two organ systems? Yes. So, we don't have to worry about the history part. So, you're saying this note, as it's written, is fine as a 99214. Show of hands. Okay, I'm serious now. How many says this note's okay as level four? How many says no? Okay, you guys are chicken. It is. This note is fine as a level four. This note will pass must 